if we take a look at the earnings whispers calendar, I mean, you can see this was really a massive week. Everything from Alphabet, Microsoft, Coke, Boeing, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, you know, just on down the list, all the majors were reporting this week. And I guess like, Trav, if you had to just say what the, the theme was this week, either good, bad, mixed, what's, what's the vibe out there? I would say uphill battle uh, and overall, you know, a, a very mixed to maybe slightly negative bent from the market. You know, these, especially companies that grew during the pandemic, companies that grew really aggressively during the pandemic, they're facing not only an uphill battle in terms of their actual earnings, right? It gets a lot harder to grow if you're comping against periods where you were growing 20, 30% and, you know, everybody was inside and online. And if that was really helping your business, well, now that the world is normalizing again, it's going to be really hard to grow from that. And so companies are already facing an uphill battle from comparisons to stronger years. Companies are facing an uphill battle with, you know, inflationary pressures on the cost lines. And then in addition to that, you've got companies facing an uphill battle when it comes to expectations. You know, the market environment, the market sentiment has totally shifted. Once multiples started compressing, investors didn't want to buy the dip on, on stocks, uh, even if their earnings were pretty solid. So it's just an uphill battle. And some stocks are still going to be able to get up that hill. Like we look at Apple today after hours, you know, it's it's um, up four or five percent after hours. And that's because, you know, they delivered the goods in terms of the numbers. The numbers beat expectations. They announced a 90 billion dollar sh uh, uh, share buyback. So they're giving investors more of what investors want to see. And then on the flip side, you know, you can look at a stock like Teladoc, which reported yesterday down 40 percent because they you know, had initially said, I think a quarter or two ago that they were going to continue growing at 30 percent plus. They had all this confidence in their business. You know, they're they were going to continue to generate you know higher levels of adjusted EBITDA. And then they come out this quarter, just one quarter later, and they're like, oops, we're pulling that guidance. Uh, we are going to grow much slower than we predicted. And so, um, yeah, that's that's going to be a battle that the companies are going to continue to face as we move forward into the earnings season. We had like 50% of the S&P 500, I think, reported this week. So we got a lot of the biggies out of the way, but there's a lot of other smaller companies that are still yet to report. And, you know, it's um, it's going to continue to be tough. I think this environment is going to be tough for companies and it's going to be tough for investors. Like this has become a very tough market where you've got to really do your homework and pick your spots rather than just buying blindly into whatever's hot like we did last year. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. You know, this is a, a list of ARC's top holdings and the percentage off of the all-time highs. I mean, you've got everything, and this was, what, two days ago that Charlie posted this, but, you know, you've got everything from Robinhood that was down, you know, over 85%, DraftKings, you know, Shopify, like, just a, a bloodbath, right? This this almost looks like a shitcoin list in a crypto bear market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The moves in some of these stocks have been just unbelievable. And we said last year, you know, we did actually say, even during some of the hot times, I think, you know, you and, and Nikki and I all said, you know, price will price does matter. You know, in these cycles, whether it's stocks or crypto, price and valuations do matter. Sentiment matters. Like you you have to be careful with this stuff. And um and I didn't think it was going to play out so quickly in this sense, but yeah, we're seeing that, you know, the, um, that sentiment and the valuations can shift a lot, but the good news, I will say the good news now is that a lot of these stocks, especially the ones that are actually putting up, you know, okay numbers, a lot of those stocks that got whacked are, are now at a level where the risk reward has shifted again. So it shifted from last year being like, how can you make money buying at this valuation to, oh, now you're buying this thing at a below market multiple of earnings looking forward five or 10 years, this, this actually might work out pretty well. 